morning good morning listen i just stopped i just ran my water to wash dishes um i i've already finished my readings and everything for this morning so i got up to start my day i got my hot water to wash my dishes and then i'm gonna go out and collect my chicken eggs and stock up all my chicken coops and stuff like that and um get my day started but i was just nudged to stop what i'm doing and to share this and so uh, what came to my spirit is a prophet without honor. The prophet is without honor in his own hometown, right? Amongst his own people. And to share just this portion, what I um, read this morning and from the uh, seal portion, chapter 52. Uh, for those of you that have the book, you already know what the entirety of the chapter is. But I'm just going to share this portion just to encourage somebody because that's what I was, you know, I felt nudged to do in my spirit just to share this and encourage somebody and this is really going to encourage you those of you who's recognized that you are the chosen one within your family you are the elect you are the one that god has an anointing and a calling on your life you may not fully understand it yet but you know that there is something that has separated you there is a divide <clears throat> with your love and your sincerity for christ you may not be perfect you may still have flaws yourself and sometimes you may the enemy may try to bring your mind to confusion god can use your you using me because I still struggle with that or I've done that or you know you may try to you may start doubting yourself and picking yourself apart but at the core of you you know that you love the Lord and you love studying his word and there's something that is calling calls it calling you to righteousness calling you to break this patterns of dysfunction within your family to break certain generational curses like certain things that may have been going on certain areas of dysfunction it all stops with you that may have been going on but when it hits you you move differently this may have been going on in the family but when it hits you you move differently you know and so that's all the generational curses breaker is is somebody who the the, the, the curses is stopped with them your whole walk is different you where well, there may have been no integrity there may have been a lot of backbiting witchcraft gossiping but you have a certain level of integrity and righteousness about yourself it doesn't mean that you're perfect even you may have sometimes people will reach out for you they may not like you or they may not invite you to things or they may you know they may separate from you but when there is a major issue that hits folk will reach out to you for your righteous judgment you know because they recognize that in you right and so you're not going to be honored amongst the people who are familiar with you and honor just simply means respected that's all that means god is no respecter of persons so nobody's bowing down to you we should all be bowing down to god but you deserve respect right and you deserve love but oftentimes when you are making progress in your life and you are achieving certain goals you are achieving things in life focusing on the things and your desires that you like oftentimes those who are in a stuck place and who are not doing anything when they cannot control you or influence you they will begin to despise you and become envious of you and you will have to flee or separate yourself or limit contact and sometimes people will pay, play with your emotions they will have these hot and cold behaviors with you and when you try to question them about that they may not give you a solid answer or say oh no it's, it's not you but they're doing it to you and then they expect you to continue to tolerate that. They will keep in contact with you and then all of a sudden go cold with you. And then all of a sudden out of the blue just show up back go hot that's pulling your emotions up and down that's witchcraft that is a form of witchcraft it's psychological warfare and you don't deserve that and you don't have to tolerate that and when you try to hold people accountable oftentimes those who are older than you you can come to them in the most respectful way but being able to articulate yourself express your feelings and sharing how they have what 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 offense you're trying to get them to acknowledge and what they've done they will try to gaslight you or sometimes they will try to call you disrespectful and so you yourself so, uh over the, over the years sometimes you could have been manipulated by that them calling you disrespectful so you just keep your mouth shut let them be right they turn your right into wrong and your wrong into right they're wrong into right right and so they're, you're not disrespectful. As you continue to grow and mature in Christ, you'll begin to see they have a level of disrespect within their own character and they don't want to show you any type of respect. Goes back to that honor, honoring God's anointed. But sometimes when you move away from them, you'll begin to see people who are often strangers in the land. They will recognize and they can discern that calling. And sometimes they will even confirm and God will use other people to speak life into your spirit. Where so much those who've been around you have been speaking death to your spirit, 
death to your name. It's always something negative and they do it in secret. And then they don't, when they're face to face with you, everything appears to be normal. But in your spirit, you already can discern the hidden things, but no one, you can't bring it up. Because if you do, they will try to make you look like the problem maker, the troublemaker. So you have to get around from people like that. They're going to remain in a stuck place, right? God is going to elevate you. That is not righteousness in that. I don't care if they attend church every Sunday and they can be people who profess to believe in God. But godly people have a, a certain level of righteousness and integrity about themselves. That's why Matthew 5 and 8 distinguishes the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see Christ. That is your reward, baby. That is your reward. So this is just going to encourage you. I want to share this with you in chapter 52 from the seals portion, just verse 1. It says, now after two days, Jesus departed thence and went into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet had no honor in his own country. For his father, Joseph, and his brothers who did not believe in him turned the hearts of the people of Galilee against him proclaiming that he was a man like all other men and that he was not the Christ. You see, Jesus' mother and his grandmother, they saw the favor in him. You know, they saw the anointing on his life, which was already spoken before he was even born, right? Of what would come through his mother's womb. But as he began to, uh, 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 when he came in the earth, as he began to live his young life, his brothers and his father, uh, showed a level of disdain about him. They didn't treat him properly. And you will learn more and more of that full story if you decide to read the sealed portion, which is Moroni's collection, recollection of it. And Moroni is a prophet of God as well. Many of his stories were found in the book of uh uh, part of his stories was found in the Book of Mormon, but many of this writing was left out. And the Book of Mormon, we know that those are uh, the descendants of uh, uh, Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh, right? And so I want you to realize this, just as Jesus went through persecution and he was not honored amongst his own people and amongst his own family, right? Just as God, I, to I said yesterday in the video, I said Moses, God told Moses, but I meant Abraham. I, I corrected myself in the comment section. But just as God has told Abram in Genesis chapter uh, uh, 12, uh, verse 1, when, when God told Abram, go from your country, go from among your, your kindred into a land that I will send thee and I will bless thee, right? He had to get Abram away from those who were familiar with him so that he could finally, he, he could begin to use Abram in a way that he wanted to use Abram. Because don't you know, sometimes those who are mostly familiar with you, when they see the hand of God on you, they only know what they're familiar with. They only, sometimes they have in their mind, their their limitations and sometimes they will try to some people will even try to project their own fear on you every time you share or talk about a desire or something that God puts in your heart it gets cast down they tell you, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Or you, you show that God wants you to be doing that. But when you move how the spirit of the Lord is leading you, it make you, you know, you may be uncertain, but you're following your spirit. You see that you're making progress. You see that you're shining a light in dark places. You see that people are benefiting. You see that you are being a help to the body of Christ. So those forces sometimes, will, those forces of darkness will speak to you through your own kindred, who those are for mostly familiar with you. And you can not sit there in a place and let somebody constantly speak death to your spirit, death to your life, because that is prophesying. Out of the mouth comes life or death, blessings or curses, and those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So you have to learn that your prayers are greater for you than the prophecies and prayers of anybody else. You begin to pray and combat that which you feel in the spirit. Don't always try to go and have a conversation with certain people about things that you see and that are revealed to you because they will gaslight you and gaslight and being gaslit will sometimes lead you to a place of frustration because it, it, it's an it's an attempt of the enemy to throw off your discernment, to make you confused about your discernment. When you learn how to move in the spirit and be more confident in what you're seeing and revealing, you don't always have to confront anyone. You just move in your lane, you know, and you can pray. And talk to God about it. God, if this is of you, because sometimes the enemy will try to confuse us as well. But you live a, a life of prayer and fasting and talking to God about things, you'll get clarity. And sometimes it takes time. 
Some things are revealed over time, but I want you to be encouraged, right? Be encouraged and understand that everything that you're seeing and that's being revealed to you, God is opening your eyes to that. God is opening your eyes. The calling that he has on your life, he is going to use you. He will protect, perfect you. He will qualify you. All you got to do is keep showing up for life, studying the word of God, stay in that word of God. It is a lamp to our feet, but be encouraged and understand there is nothing new under the sun. Sometimes those right around you will be speaking negatively and death to your future, to your dreams, to your goals, because they can't see it for themselves, right? And we know that Hebrews 11 and 1 says faith um, now the, uh, Hebrews 11, one says, now faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of that, which is not seen. Right. And then Hebrews 11, 11 confirms through Sarah's faith. Initially she had doubted, doubted, but when she believed and trusted in God through her faith, she, she conceived and gave birth at her late latter age. Right. And so without faith, it's impossible for us to please God. You don't have to always share everything that God is revealing it to you, especially now that he's shown you where all of a lot of those witchcraft and word curses attacks have been coming from, right? Don't let anybody gaslight you anymore. You know, you keep doing what you're doing. Keep operating in your calling. Keep studying. And if you don't know, you're uncertain of certain things. Don't ever move ahead of God. Just keep showing up for life day by day, taking your time. Don't be anxious for anything. Let not thy heart be anxious for nothing, but through all things, just prayer and supplication. And the number one thing is to keep studying the word of God. When you, when God begins to finally shift you and he show you that place or wherever he wants to move you to and whatever he wants to do, when you are embraced and you come around people who have that same light in their spirit and they begin to just recognize you for who you are, it's going to feel like a whole, like your life has just begun. It may bring you to tears, you know, you come across people who can actually recognize you for you, who can actually honor the God on the inside of you, who can honor your good heart and appreciate a good person, a loving person. There's only those who are filled with venom and hate that can't appreciate somebody who's full of love and sincerity. They'll be willing to take from you, but they don't show you no respect. And that's what keeps taking your spirit down because you're casting pearls to swine. See, keep what God has given you for you. Use what God has given you for you. And you wait, wait, I say on the Lord, wait on him to move, to, to guide your footsteps into your next move. But you're not crazy, baby. And you're definitely not alone. I pray that this word has encouraged you. You're on the right path. And that's why your eyes are being opened more and more right? The enemy is not winning. Evil is not winning. We're just getting stronger. You're rising above, right? You're rising above. God is perfecting his people, right? You couldn't see what you see and feel what you feel if you weren't growing in your level of discernment, see? And the more that you grow, the less you be getting into the flesh, arguing with people, see? When you put up boundaries and then you see they keep trying to overstep them boundaries, they don't want to show you no respect. Sometimes that be the main one who's whispering behind your back, calling you disrespectful because they don't want to respect you. See, you're not a little kid anymore. You're an adult now. Even though you may have some childlike ways, that's okay. And you have a right to nurture your inner child. You can do that. Nurture your inner child. But you're still an adult and you deserve respect. Right? God bless you. I love you. If no one has told you that this morning, then you already know your little country bumpkin sister loves you. We are the light of the world. Let's don't ever let that light go dark, baby. Keep shining bright. And we know that the blood of Jesus, our friend, our brother, our savior, that blood is the only blood that has power. Even he wasn't respected, honored amongst his own people, right? And so think it not strange when you realize that you are the chosen one. You are the one whose God's hand is on. Even if you don't, you haven't fully identified your purpose yet. He's calling you to it. Sometimes you have to grow through it, right? You have to have these experiences. They're all necessary. And then in the end, as you continue to live and show up for life, the revelations will come as time goes by, by and by. Don't ever try to get ahead of God. You're on the right path. Just continue to take your time and keep studying the word. 
God bless you. I love you. Think positive, be positive. Remember, our thoughts are greater for us than the thoughts of another, right? Positive thoughts create positive feelings. And that's what Paul pretty much was saying when he said, think on whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. Think on these things. To sum all of that up, all Paul was saying was, think positive. <laughs> Have a blessed day. I love you.